My name is Stephanie Kletke. Within the project uh, Diversity, I was involved on behalf of uh, Liège University uh, with my colleague Corentin Eke. Uh, together we worked on the case studies. I myself am trained as an agronomist and my colleague is a, a sociologist. The main objective in these case studies was to better understand how initiatives, so crop diversity initiatives, network both within each initiative and across initiatives. We chose those case studies uh, to reflect a diversity in geographic locations, in uh, crop types, and also to reflect different scales. So to look at very local initiatives, also regional initiatives, or European initiatives such as, for example, the European coordination Let's Liberate Diversity. We approached those networks with the notion of bridge. We tried to understand what helps people, initiatives to connect among each other, to tackle certain obstacles. And this, these bridges might be people themselves, but they can also be the plants themselves or even things such as, for example, technical, mean, technical means of communication, uh, meetings, etc. Among the case studies, there were two CSA initiatives, so community supported agriculture initiatives one in Spain and one in Romania, that were trying to connect the people associated with, with this CSA with the seed, with crop diversity. And there's many ways, many bridges that uh, allow initiatives to connect with the eaters, with the consumers. For example, communicating about taste, having people live the experience of seeing, of touching, of tasting the products of, these, uh, of this crop diversity. The work of people with this crop diversity is uh, anchored in practice, it is anchored in a community. And that it is that since it's the communities and the diversity of communities and their anchorage in a, in a specific context that creates this crop diversity, uh, that's where the relations between these people and the plants happen. And so this local anchorage um, is important. And so one of the recommendations that came out of these case studies is to foster a multiplication of initiatives or a proliferation of initiatives rather than the upscaling. Often these, these initiatives that we've looked at were very strongly based on project-based funding. So that's a funding that has a limited duration of two, three, four years, and that funds a specific activity that goes toward a very specific op well, objective. And that what these, one of the challenges of uh, the initiatives is to have funding for more structural work and also to foster that shared culture among the initiative, building knowledge that is locally anchored or anchored in the practice of that initiative. And those types of aspects often lack funding. So that is something that we need, need to look out for. Many of us are quite aware that through the standardization of seeds, so that is the obligation to market uh, uniform and stable seeds, crop diversity was very much limited. This European legal framework doesn't only limit crop diversity, but it also pushes the knowledge that is associated and the identities of people that are working with this crop diversity, that are growing that diversity. Those identities, that knowledge, uh, that culture is pushed to the margins. So that means that there's a need for legitimacy, for visibility, this pushing to the margins is also one effect of the current European legal framework. An obstacle that we identified, but that the case studies did not allow to find an answer to, is the question of language. When initiatives network at a, at a European level, a uh, working language is usually English or sometimes French. And that poses a problem, for example, for the direct inclusion of practitioners. Or, I mean, in many cases, there is a translation, but that what we also need to be aware of is that using a single language, be it English, French, or Estonian, whenever you use um, one language, you also at the same time sort of crush, flatten the way that people talk about their plants, talk about crop diversity. In Nordic countries, people quite easily speak about ancient varieties, old varieties, heirloom varieties, and when that, that word is used, for example, I know that many uh, members of um, French initiatives 
they don't like that word at all because they say no these aren't old varieties they're current varieties and so they'll use farmers varieties or peasant varieties but then people from the uk will say oh no peasant has a not so positive connotation in english and so that's what i mean by flattening the way people relate to plants the outcomes of these case studies are understood as learnings we learn from them and share those learnings as a way to perhaps inspire other initiatives inspire new ways of doing but they sh really shouldn't be considered one size fits all recipes that can be applied in any context <laughs>